So here we have three problems that we're going to look at. And how should you feel when you walk in the class and I make a statement? And I make one of these statements. And then when everyone settles down, I say, that statement I told you is a lie. That means we want to get the negation of what I said. Now what should you think? Okay. So here's what happened. You walked in the classroom and I said this to you. And when everyone settles down a half, a, you know, a minute or two later, I say, that statement is a lie. What do you know? Okay, let's see. Some of the class passed. So first thing I do is I say to you, okay, some of the class passed the test. I'm like, okay, that's middle ground. And I say, that's a lie. What does that mean? So here's the way I go through the process of deciding what I'm certain of and what is possible. And here we go. Um, my statement now, the negation of it is going to be, it is false that. Now I just took my red and applied the negation stamp to the statement and then it just takes off and keeps on going. And so here we have, it is false that some of the class passed. Now, questions for you. Probably not going to necessarily stay with some of the class passed and just say, I'm just going to leave it alone without at least thinking about what's going on. Okay. The question that we begin with to ask what's going on here, if it's a lie that at least one of the students, remember, some is at least one, it's a lie that at least one student passed. Okay, so one, two, three, four, on up to the class total are all lies if you say that many people passed. And so now this is saying it's a lie that at least one passed. Okay, so one is out, two is out, three is out. If our class is made of 16 people, all the numbers up to 16 is out. All you get is zero. And the negation becomes no one or none passed. The next one. We come in, and as people are starting to settle in, I say, none of the class passed, and there's an uproar, how terrible, what a bad exam, he's a terrible teacher, whatever people say. Um, I said, you know what, folks, that was a lie. I was lying when I said none of the class passed. And up goes a, hooray, we've all passed. Is that correct? Well, let's see. None of the class passed, so not even zero passed. So what we have when none of the class, uh, only zero people in the class is exactly the number that passed. Now, what this is saying, sorry, not even zero, but this is saying not even one of the class passed. And now what does that mean? We reverse that, so I'm going to take down that two and have it say, it is false that not one of the class passed. Now, this is me reversing the none of the class passed. It is false that not even one of the class passed. Okay, what does that mean? It's a lie to say that zero people passed. So what's the smallest number that could have passed? Because it's not zero, but it's possible that one person passed. That means at least one. Known as some people passed. It's guaranteed that at least some of the people passed. So we don't have everybody failing. Got to be at least one person in the class. Guaranteed by the statement being a lie that nobody passed. Not it's not true that zero passed, so it's some number other than one passed. And if you look at the two extremes, you get both possibilities. The extreme, fewest number of people that could pass, in reality, there is one. And that's a case where some of the people pass. Not many, but some, yes. The other extreme might also be possible. If I say it is false that not even one person passed, so it's a lie, is it possible that everybody passed? And that's true. Maybe all people passed. You need to be aware of the possibilities of the two extremes. What's the fewest that could have it happen? What's the most that could have it happen? And then if they both have different ways that they come out as statements, then both are possibilities. And you go to the one that's not as extreme, which is, although he initially was saying that 
nobody passed and now he was lying, you could not automatically jump to certainty that everybody passed. So now we say all the class passed. This is the one that could really upset people. Like if one person or more happened, say so I'll give you a, a peek at what happened if at least somebody didn't pass the test. Would not do this because I don't want people pointing out, out who did it and all that. But what about if you walk in, the teacher says all of the class had passed. We go with it is false that. And now people are really upset. I can't believe we all failed. Well, I'm glad you can't believe it because maybe that's not true. What we're saying here is if it says all the class passed is a lie, then there are two extremes of what that can be. The worst extreme, if it's a lie that all the class passed, is that at least one passed. Because then you're saying the worst case, if he guarantees that we didn't all, you know, if this all the class passed is not true, then... One thing that this is saying, it's false that the whole class, oh, let's see, all the class passed, about that, it's a little could happen with logic, but let's strike it. It is false that the entire class passed. Now people might have the thought, oh God, we all passed. We all failed, because you just said we didn't all pass. But the extremes of that are, if it's a lie that you all passed, at least one person failed. And that's the certainty, at least one person failed. Because you can't keep it at all. Passing. So we got this. At least one did not pass. You gotta have at least one person to cause that to not be true. Or, and this one by the way is called some did not pass. It is false that all of the class passed. Go to the other extreme. The extreme with the fewest failures is one failure. The extreme with the most failures is everyone passed. Uh, everyone that would have passed now failed. So we have original statement. Everybody passed is a lie. The best situation for the overall class is to have only one person fail. The worst situation for the whole class that still makes it true is everyone did fail. This is where we normally are. That's what we can guarantee for certain, no matter what the reality of it is, this will be a true statement. Because even if you have everybody that wound up failing, that nobody passed, or it is false that anyone passed, that's a case where at least one person did not pass. So that's always true. So what we do in these cases is we don't look to the extremes of what can happen when we do a negation. But we say, what are we guaranteed to be true, even though there might be a more extreme possibility in the outcomes? And that will wrap us up for our negations. And that wraps up lecture 14.